Okay, welcome back to another video and today I wanted to talk about a film camera that I found from my grandpa's old stuff. This camera here, this is the Minolta XG1. Unfortunately, my grandpa passed away last year. It's been a little over a year now and I was going through like stuff we had to get rid of and all that. And I found this camera and I actually thought it was dead. So I didn't touch it for the longest time. And believe it or not, I started film photography with medium format cameras. My first film camera I bought, I fell into the hype of a Mamiya RB67, which it was a well-deserved hype, by the way. Nothing bad to say about it, except the fact that it was just too big for me. And by the way, I just sold it last week. So my go-to medium format camera is now the Pentax 6.7 which it has always been for a good amount of time now. But anyways, going back to this XG1, randomly last month, I just put in a battery and just thought, okay, so it was turning on and everything, but I didn't know if it was working because the battery, it could, you know, power up the camera, but I didn't know how the images would turn out. So I put in some Kodak Gold and again, this is my first time ever shooting 35 millimeter film. And I got back the images just, it was literally just around the house. I didn't want to take anything crazy. I just wanted to see how the camera shot and if the shutter sounded okay. And I got back the images and shout out to Legacy Photo Lab. They're so quick and easy. And I thought the uh, images were pretty good. I was actually kind of surprised. By the way, this camera was first introduced in 1977 all the way to, I think, 1984. So obviously it's a really old camera. And when I found it, it was actually in like pristine condition. It was, it had the carrying case in a leather carrying case. I don't know where I put it, but it was, it barely had even any dust on it. So once I got those images back, I thought, okay, this is works really good. And it has a Rokor, Rokor? It has a Rokor 50 millimeter 1.4 lens on it. And this thing, when I got the, when I actually took it out, I was really impressed with the images. I guess the only downside of a quote unquote point and shoot camera is that the, this lens specifically, although it's a very good lens, it's not an autofocus and I kind of wish it had that option, but again, really can't complain after I got the images because of how crisp the images looked. Actually, when I went to go actually shoot this thing, not the test images, I did shoot an automatic shutter speed because that's the only mode where the built-in exposure meter works. And I guess you could say I kind of gambled because I wasn't sure if the lighting was, or if the light meter was even working correctly. So I shot in automatic, hoping that the images would turn out okay. thing I discovered was that there was a light leak and I guess the first roll that I tested it didn't really catch the light leak because it was indoors there was not enough light to cause an extreme light leak in the images whereas these actual roll I shot I did go on like a really really bright day
but I'm actually happy that's the only issue that this camera has because recently my Pentax 6.7 it had a shutter issue when I shot faster than 1 over 250 and luckily I sent it out and I got it fixed and it works okay now but you know a few hundred bucks gone just from that issue but that's what you deal with when you're dealing with these old super old film cameras So yeah, as I was saying, I'm really glad that it only had a light leak issue because I can easily fix that with some sticker foam. Um, I've done it on my other cameras and it's kind of an easy fix to do myself. So I was just walking around town, seeing what I can get. It was a very hot day and I actually when I was finishing up my roll, I got a shot of these two helicopter, military helicopters, and I thought that was a pretty neat shot. And this camera, I checked on eBay just to see what prices were like, and unfortunately, I couldn't find that many, not to mention, especially in mint condition, I think I found one that might have been mint, but on the plus side, they are very cheap. Again, I don't know the conditions of these cameras, so I'm actually kind of surprised that it's hard to find these in mint condition, but also when you do find one, it's still relatively cheap. Like, I don't think they're going for more than a hundred bucks, and I'm kind of surprised only because I had zero idea what this camera cost, but just from the build quality, and especially after I got the scans back, I thought it may be like a few hundred bucks. And I'm not saying that because I wanted to sell it, but just like I was really impressed by the images and the build quality. And now after seeing this, the images and seeing what this thing can do. I'm really glad that I finally have a 35 millimeter film camera that I can just kind of take anywhere. And again, I wish it had an autofocus just so I could like really go out and not worry about focusing, but you know, maybe I can get another lens for that. Maybe there is an automatic focusing lens for this camera, which I'm sure there is. But other than that, I'm Looking forward to taking this out to more places and seeing what this thing can really do, especially on like trips. Maybe I can get more like candid images from this thing as much as I can while manually focusing. So I'm really excited and I'm glad these images turned out great. And as always, thank you for watching the video. If you guys can like the video and please subscribe to my channel. I'm always bringing more content for you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.